for the interview. Thank you very He's much. humble as well. Send it back to the couch. Let's see what they have to make of it. He's everything you want in a League of Legends player. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I think that like a lot of the rookies coming up are actually really self-critical. And I think that kind of on the old guard, because there were so many players that played for so long and it took a long time yeah. for the, and then they went through the wave of imports and the Oceanic rookies really had to wait a long time. And it's good to see a lot of them doing so well, even like yeah. last year with Babip stepping up. Now people like Topoon coming in, Alidor, Guncrab. I mean, you have a ton of them on your roster as well. I just think like it's a really good news story for o, uh, OPL to see the next wave coming across. Absolutely. And all I can tell from rookies, man, is they just work so hard. Like yeah. they are their own biggest mm. critics and that's important, right? Because then no one can really affect you. Yeah. What matters the most is that you've improved for yourself but like they still work super hard to improve it. So the work ethic is there with it. They're hungry, not yeah. like us, just dead inside. Uh, speaking of dead inside, Jake's drawing. Which yes. is dead on the outside. Speaking of own biggest critics. So I want to preface this. Please. With we're both fathers. We and are. sometimes you need educational content for your kids. Yes. And there is no better way than when you share a hobby with your son and you're able to learn together in a fun way. Absolutely. So you had a problem at the start of the show. And I've created a League of Legends comic <laughs> okay. to try and solve the problem. Okay. So, you probably can't see, but it's Garen, and he's in a men's bathroom. There's a urinal there. Yep. And the title of the comic is, Do I Stand on the Grave? <laughs> so, this is designed to be one of those comics, you know, like, did you ever read Are You My Mother? When it was a bird, like, asking all the different... No, but I know the yeah. kind of thing you're talking yeah. about. So, this is going to be a comic yep. of, like, Garen learning. Mm-hmm. About how to use a men's bathroom. So is which it, I think is a very poignant topic okay. in today's society, <laughs> sure. based off recent research. So I have I have a few questions. Okay. I'm going to start with number one. Uh, is the f is the second question in the book? How did I fit through the front door? <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter of perspective. It's a perspective. <laughs> He's much closer to the person uh, than he is to the door, Nick. Gandalf with the yes. hobbits. Yes, absolutely. There's a way. Second question. <laughs> Um, is it all, uh, has it all got to do with the men's bathroom, uh, or is it, it is, right? It's like, no, not flushing, necessarily, right? Because like, hygiene. Do, do I stand on the grade? It's just, it's not actually like the entire plot. It's just like a theme of the book. Because it's more a yeah, yes, no they, answer. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, there, yeah. There, there are more scenarios, you know? <laughs> Maybe so, there'll be Lux in a female bathroom. I have no idea. So page two is just yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> page three is the next problem. Yeah, page three is an ad for the next issue as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, okay, right. that's fantastic. I, I think you did a very good job. Thank you. Um, and I'm not being facetious here. I think the fact that you tackled perspective is commendable. Thank you. You didn't. And have the to. other thing that I want to point out to everyone is when you do go to the bathroom, make sure you stand your sword up against the wall. No one likes to be standing next to a dude with a sword. <laughs> Bailey, what do you have to say there? <laughs> <laughs> oh god Alrighty then Let's move on to uh, The second half of Procast So this Oh one is no I should have yeah, talked back, For longer baby. about Garen Yes he's, a, he's closer to the camera You should have vamped More and more uh, Because we are only Halfway through the Procast uh, Oh and uh, uh, Sorry Someone just pointed out As well Cursed Existence says Don't forget about the poll Who wore, who wore it best So please uh, If you haven't voted on the poll Vote on the poll What is it to this show Ani will know, put man. the poll In the chat and then, look, they just gave me free reign. You can't just... say, you just, you drew Garen in a bathroom with a sword. Like, you can't say true. that. We can draw Garen in the bathroom <laughs> with a sword. <laughs> That's the beauty of the OPL. It's That's not amazing. my fault for stood against the, the wall. The I always I put your sword like against this. the wall when you go to the bathroom. All right, bring up the weird freaky picture of eight men joined together. <laughs> I'm crying. Anytime. <laughs> can we also run through what we know? So. So that we can continue this. This is uh, the recap, the left eye. Is Swiffer. None of us knew he had blue eyes. Everyone <laughs> I went and checked. Today. They're more grey blue. He told me that's because he's not outside. All I right. told him he wasn't outside when he took the OPL photos. So what the does that have to do with anything? We got into an irrelevant conversation. Uh, we also learned his favourite game out of that side of the league is Age of Empires. And that's also a complete lie because he plays so much of... What is he bad Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley. 100% oh, he's yeah. favourite game okay. Stardew Valley. Okay, update league Peter. Uh, face is Rays, the moustache was Balkan, and mm -hmm. the hair was Raid. We are missing the lips, the eyebrows, the nose, and the right eye. I think we start with the other eye. Okay. I think you have to. Brown eye. Good. Brown eyes. Okay, that narrows it down. So it's definitely Swiffer. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. He has the best last name in the OPL. Is it Raid? Ooh. No, it's not Raid. That's his hair. Raid has a good last name, though, doesn't he? Scordos. It's a great last name. Scorsese. Mr. Scorsese. 
Scorsese's I, good like, have, This is so subjective. Yeah, well... What is, what is uh, a great... Okay. You know what? Yes, it is. I think Wendell is the best Listen to last me. name in the... OPR. Listen to me. Yes. He's not playing. It is subjective. Oh, also, you're saying subjective. that's very wrong. No, it's Wendell. very subjective. I believe it is the best last name uh, in the OPL. I don't know who it is, but I understand the, the hint. What's the hint? Can I, can I take a guess? Yeah. Is it crazy? Because Dobie's the best last name in the OPL. No, it's not, but Damn. good guess. What's your last name? Richardson. Richardson. Yeah. Is his name Richardson? Yes. <laughs> who his last name is that's Richardson? That's what I don't know. Wait, oh, is wait, it is it Alador? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I got it. Wow. <laughs> there was eye contact there from Nick Boy that there was like, <laughs> you know this. <laughs> it was my very knowing look face. Uh, Alador, Avant Support, best last name in the OPL, and his name sounds like he should be a mage in a Bioware game. To be fair, yeah. there is so many Ryans in my team that I don't know their real names anymore. Well, you don't need to know anyone's real name. They've, got, they've all got made up fancy mage yeah, names. Yeah, Big Al. There you go, he's Big, Big Al. Al. He should be in uh, Bioware 10 years ago when they were all good. Uh, all right, <laughs> next one. Oh, come on. We've all played the pieces of shit they're putting out. Uh, <laughs> next one. The yeah. nose, the eyebrows, or the lips? What do you want? Give Your me the choice. nose. The nose? Give Side us the for nose. the nose. Can we have another look, please? All right. Who Did the nose get bigger yeah, between so this <laughs> look at the picture and the last look at the picture? It's, it's a wide nose. The yep. person also, I think, had their head tilted. Ah, uh, yes, photo. yes, very much so. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue for this one. Yeah. Well, thank you. This body part used to support the best accessory in the OPL. Oh, got it. I don't want to say. Do yeah, I, good. Am I spoiling? Yeah, go no. It's king. It's king! It's king! It's king! The Gucci glasses. The good glasses. Such good glasses. Sorry, I immediately went to who has a nose piercing and <laughs> couldn't no, think support. of a single person. Yeah, support the best accessory. Bryce, the most expensive I. glasses in the league. That's why you're, you're my kings. favorite. Uh, okay, eyebrows and lips. That's all we got left. Eyebrows belong to the same person. They are not matched to the eyes. Oh, okay. That, okay. Uh, they are. Is it just someone? They, they're nice eyebrows. They're eyebrows. good eyebrows. They're actually very like. I like oh, those eyebrows. My sister-in-law runs a tattoo. Uh, the, she tattoos. Oh, eyebrows. tattoos eyebrows yeah, and stuff. She, yep. Yeah, and uh, there's Beautician. different ways you can do it, like yep. feathering, or you can do like actual solid eyebrow tattoo. These, these, these person, this person doesn't need tattoo feathering. No. Not at all. <laughs> there I have no mouths. idea who it is. <laughs> you, I get paid to make this entertaining. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know who it is. There. And he's not reading clues, Bryce. How do I make it entertaining? <laughs> this, you tell me. Okay. This person <laughs> is my favorite person to watch on stream. Get back. Correct. <laughs> okay. Those eyebrows do a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> We've got second best eyebrows in the OPL. Who has the best eyebrows? It's Nick Boy. Okay. Last one. It's the lips. Who do they belong to? Ooh. Who are those lips? They are rookie lips. Oh. They are, and I don't want to make this weird, but my favorite lips in the OPL. That's already weird. <laughs> I have no idea. I spoke about this person, I believe, last week and said how much I like their enthusiasm and energy. When they're on the desk, they make it happy. They just want to win. They don't win too much. It's Chaz. Chaz? It's Chaz. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. All right. What a freaky picture. And I think we could all thank our lucky stars. We never need to see it again. That was wild. That was the most wild Procasso we've done. It was. Well, it's I because... I don't know anymore. Here's the thing. Bryce lifted... Bryce is an anomaly. And we've spoken about this because he's definitely a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> he just he's he skewed the difficulty curve for everyone else. Absolutely. Yeah, That's then true. you I picked take up my someone else's save file. Oh, exactly. And I'm just dying over That's and true. over again. And like I have to stream this and Bryce is sitting there in the background exactly. like every asshole does going tut tut tut. Not as good as I did it. They're bad people. They are bad people who made that picture. They should be ashamed of themselves and will definitely do it again uh, <laughs> later on. Now we're coming up to the next I game. I agree with Bailey, by yeah. the way. It's game over. The next game really of the day, the final game of the day, some would argue game of the day. Yeah, I would argue that. I would argue that. Yeah, I Bryce? Think, I think Pyro would argue that. I, agree. I, I think would whenever order players, yeah. that's we got game of the day. Four to five yeah. cashers agree. I yeah. actually miss when they used to mute the mics at the desk when we did our <laughs> segment. You're only saying that because you're sitting on the couch. If you <laughs> were over there, way. you'd be shouting <laughs> until the roof fell in. I miss that. Um, This game. Good old days. If Chiefs win, by the way, 
Yep. I'm only letting you do this because they're brand new, out of the box shoes. They haven't been worn outside. Look, unlike Bryce's, unlike bottom Bryce's of the shoes, filthy. spotless. Bryce, the show me the bottom of your shoes. Bryce, show us the bottom of your, shoes. Not, bottom of your shoe right now. Put it out for the desk, you filthy animal. Put the desk. I'm not cutting back to the couch until you put your desk on the table. Okay, first of all, you have no control. You have no control. No, why are you taking? He's coming. He's coming over here. Holy crap. I'm getting out of here. It's the wrong foot. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty gross, actually. You really should clean those more. It happened today! I was walking through the disgusting city of Sydney. You don't bring a shoe carrier? And there was garbage. Wait, wait and you, had, you, had to, you had to walk like a pleb? You don't take, you no, don't take I, like what, a car? Jake, Jake opened the show. We, we went and got some lunch. Don't this you have guy, Uber in this city? This guy was just <laughs> buying new shoes. Jake just undid my bloody pinch roll. What's wrong with you? I hope you your know, father is watching oh. and he buys you a new pair of shoes. God damn it. Or You're an animal. Saying. Chiefs versus Nick order. Never sure touch me on again. The, on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> if yep. Chiefs win this, they okay. lock in a place <laughs> in, in Golden. Oh, do they really? Yeah. That's big news for the Chiefs. And they were able to beat Order last week. One of those funky weeks where back to back weeks. We're gonna uh, Order's gonna play Chiefs. They're gonna play on different sides of the map. So it's not at least it's not double red side. They are playing, you know, they played red blue, now they're playing blue red. And it must win for them to, you know, stay as close as they can to the bombers because they are one to one in head to head at the very least. So yep. they are the ones in this league that have a chance to yep. actually catch them. Absolutely. This is our last possible resort to take down the Bombers. <laughs> Not that we want to, but come on, we all want to. <laughs> uh, let's throw it over to the desk. The Twitter stream is Swiffer, and you've got Pyra and Ejem and his dirty shoes <laughs> cast in the final game <laughs> of the day. Yeah, this is... Race, <laughs> shoes, Paul. This is this yeah. show is something. This it is, really is at least my bloody this name's right on the graphic. Nick's just <laughs> harassing my feet. What is going wrong? What is... This is... I don't know. I'm, whatever. <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you signed up for, not in the this job is, description. Yeah, no, Nick Nick changed the bloody broadcast. Oh, no, he, he changed the game, yeah, man. He, he came in here and he, he just bloody he thinks he owns the place. God damn. Well, you know a team that, that is hoping to flip the script at least a little bit with <laughs> the Bombers' dominance? Flip your I, did, pen? I did flip my <laughs> pen. I did, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't catching it. I'm so sorry. Oh, you were throwing. I wasn't it. trying to catch oh, it. Oh, okay. Sorry. You want me to catch it? I'll catch my pen. Yeah. No, nah, it's okay. Easy. Great, great cool. Job. Yeah. Flip the script. Chiefs. If they win, mm. they lock into playoffs. Yeah. Okay. They are the only team that can possibly own a head-to-head -head over Bombers. Yes. Because so. they've beaten them once, which no one else has done. They play tomorrow, but that's not about this game. Chiefs versus Order. Yeah. But game. like because those two points, I think locking themselves into playoffs not really the biggest thing, right? They're 11 wins, three losses. Like they can drop a couple of games in the last few weeks, and they will still be in playoffs. Mm -hmm. They obviously would much prefer to not have to run the gauntlet and sit it. Like if they get first place, hell yeah, brother, that feels good. But if you sit at second, like you only have to play one gauntlet match. And honestly, some people might even argue that playing like a single gauntlet match is better than just waiting and like for a whole weekend not touching competitive League of Legends and just sitting at the final. So that's true. Interesting uh, point of contention there. Yeah, now on the other hand, a team that cannot afford to drop any games is Order. Yep. This is a team that had a real off the rails kind of mid split. It started to all go downhill for them and they, l they ended their losing streak last week against Direwolves. That was kind of the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. They need to step it up. But the issue is they're up against the Chiefs. Yes, so uh, mm -hmm. A pretty tough game here. A victory means they're getting some kind of cheeky points because when you look at the middle of the ladder, it's very yeah. muddy. I believe they'd have a tiebreaker over Chiefs if they mm. won this one because yes, it's no, currently yeah. one to one. Yeah, they beat them earlier on on the split, but yeah. like Order and Gravitas pre today were sitting on the same same points, and then AV lost to Gravitas, so now like they get closer to the middle of the pack as with Mammoth. So, so it's somewhat inter interesting if you kind of look at the rest of the season and expect Chiefs Bombers to beat everyone. Like, these upset performances that can happen mean a lot for these teams. They so. certainly do. Now, let's talk a little bit about picks and bans. Yes. We've been talking about the stake setting up until this point. We've had a bunch of mid laners banned away. Lissandra, Zoe, Yasuo, LeBlanc, a handful of side laners as well with the Jace and the Kled. Yep. Uh, a couple of target bans there. And then on the order side, after the Lucian gets locked in first for Chiefs, they're toying with the idea of Aatrox. Now you're all caught up. They yeah. pick it up. And uh, I believe we've seen Spooks play this. Yes, as I, well as Cali. I, like they're holding onto the flex, obviously, but like it most likely it will just be defaulting to the jungle, depending on what the matchups are. A little bit of table setting, like Chiefs don't want to be playing Jace because they can't realistically hold the flex. Swiper doesn't want to play Jace in the top lane. He'd much prefer the tanks. He'd much prefer the Kled. So order on red side, they sack a ban, which probably should have been Lucian against another team. They throw it to the Kled and. Chiefs picked that one up for Quinny K. Uh, makes a lot of sense, and this is going to be a very different answer to Lucian than we saw Direwolves try and pull out, right? Like, this is an Ezreal maybe paired with a Tarm Kench. We saw that earlier on in the day. This isn't the aggressive punish the Lucian lane. It's the sit back and 
not even lose, but just like play as safely as possible. And maybe you go down a few CS, but you scale much harder. The Chiefs for their uh, part are going for a very classic combination. It's the good old wife steal bot lane. Yep. And they will throw a rise into the mix as well. Now, obviously this is always some flex potential, but I've got a very strong feeling that this is a Claire champion. Yes. It doesn't feel like the kind of thing Big Swifts would be running. Mm -hmm. With uh, the fact that L Lissandra's gone, Zoe's gone, Jace is gone, Yasuo is gone, and LeBlanc is gone, mid pool has been heavily pinched. So Rise, one of the tier one laners left back in the pool. They take that one for Claire. He's a long time Rise player. Swift has been around for a while, you know, he's got a bit of a champion ocean, so I expect him to have a decent pick into this, but it won't be one that's at the height of the meta. Like, he can play the old school, the Syndra, yeah. the Orianna, probably play some weird stuff as well. As, he might have to, too. Yeah. They continue to hammer away at these mid uh, bands. Now, on the other side, Order are really heavily focusing out Swiper with the Rumble and now the Renekton band mm -hmm. away. And so, yeah, just removing all of Swiper's blind pick top laners. And I feel like this is interesting, given that it's an Ezreal Tarm locked in for Dream and Jake, and it will be a counter pick for Tally. Tally has not been playing good League of Legends lately. He was getting solo killed in the top side, I think versus Top Hoon, and he's been like having very rough performances, but this will be a strong side Tally game for Order. So the trust coming in that he will beat his old foe in Swiper, they remove the Kled, they remove the Rumble, they remove the Renekton. Three champions that Swiper A plays, B can probably blind pick in the current meta, and C will just be comfortable on. So they're removing the strong stuff that he plays, and they will give him counter pick. So the question is, will it be enough? Cassiopeia is locked in for Swiffer now, a champion that's been getting a bit of a resurgence today, as well as just in general. Chiefs on their side, they still need to lock in a jungle choice as well. Jarvan, mm -hmm. one of those left up and available. This would give them a lot of engage potential. Yeah, they have the lockdown of the uh, Jarvan. They have pick potential with a rise, with a thresh. So just rounding out a fairly standard composition. And I'm most interested to see what Swiper goes towards. Does he just look at the top pole and be like, man, this is a Scion game. And then maybe Tally gets to play some of his mage matchups. He can play the Vladimir. Is there another pick for Swiper? He goes down the list of tanks, like Maokai's playable, Orn's playable. Nico is playable? There is, no, okay, Question Nico, mark? very strong. Swiper is not touching this champion. If Swiper locks this in, I will be incredibly surprised. This is a hover from Ayla, maybe to troll his teammates, and Chiefs like to put their comms from pre-game on stage onto social media. So, oh, Ooh, okay. it's Top Jarvan. Yep. Okay, I was going to ask you about this uh, a little bit earlier. Is that, is that a possibility? Do they yep. want to do that? And it looks like that's the case. Only goes in the lease in. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of engage on the Chiefs' side. Yes, there certainly is. So Top Jarvan is a decent blind pick. And we'll see what Tally goes towards. Has a lot of options. Does he go like hardcore split push and then play with the Ezreal Tarm in the later game? Does he go for like a heavy lane I mean, bully? How, how does the Aatrox do try and punish that? him? Yeah, okay. That's what they want. Yeah. Okay, so Aatrox top for Tally. And this is an interesting composition. Talk me through what Order is going to be trying to do with this. Yeah, well, they have a very strong mid 2v2, right? Like it's a Rek'Sai, it's a Cassiopeia. They have a bunch of upfront burst potential. I um, mean, if Cass Cassio gets rolling, she is very oppressive into a composition that the Chiefs have put together, right? Lucian, short range AD carry. If you cull her, she instantly ults you in the face and you die. Rise, short range as well. And Miasma kind of denies you the, the tankiness of Rise. Like he hits you, gets a shield and zooms around. Like on a Miasma, you can't zoom around. So I think yeah. the mid lane is gonna be the crux here for order. It's like kind of a throwback mid lane too. I mean, this this used to be like the standard for a time. Yeah. Where we saw Cassiopeia rise consistently. And in two lanes, by the way, that was mm -hmm. the top lane for a while too. Yep. And these two mid laners are like the standard Oceanic mid laners, right? They've been playing against each other from probably solo queue 2013, competitive easily 2014. They've had stints. Yeah. Like Claire went to Japan. By the for way, a you know you know how I learned about a little bit of that? Uh, because I'm a fair newcomer to the OPL. Mm -hmm. uh, nice little um, nice little history video series yeah. started off by our very own uh, Laws, Lazani. Yep. And OPL uh, history. I learned some OPL history. So yeah. yeah, go check it out on YouTube. Talking about the old school path to pro. Shouting it out there. Cool, cool. Good stuff. So Chiefs versus Order. Eleven and three for Chiefs, solidly in the second place position, can guarantee themselves a playoff berth with a win here today. For Order, who can hardly afford to drop a game. They need every single win that they can get. And joining us to talk about Order's chances today is, of course, going to be Choo Choo's. Welcome to the desk. Hello. You know, the last time I was here, I did an interview for the Chiefs game last week. Yeah. yeah. Funny I'm how that works two. out. A little bit yeah. of back to back. So it's essentially we're having the same interview. Oh, okay. Well, two things. I have no short-term memory. Say? I said we would win. Okay. And Are you going to win? Not. So, okay. So let me, let me try <laughs> to go a different tack this time. Mm -hmm. Will you win? I think it's much more likely this time around. Okay, why is okay. that? 
I think we outdrafted them. Oh, okay. Lol Ooh. call. You want to go into a little detail there? Yeah, I think um, we had an answer for every single one of their picks. I think we actually got counters in every single role in this game. Yeah, okay. I think like we got the counter to Lee Sin, the counter to Jarv, and the counter to Rise, the counter to their bot lane. Yep, which is... Uh, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Uh, I want to talk to you about something maybe harder to answer. Because Tally, because like with the trajectory of this draft, you know, like Swiffer is on the Cassio into the Rise, like it's it's a very yes. weak side bottom lane in the Ezreal Tom Kench, and mm -hmm. honestly, like Tally's been having a rough couple of weeks in the OPL. Like I was potentially looking like Aatrox maybe going towards Spooks and a much harder counter pick for him, but Has like, he? oh yeah. yeah, no, no, yeah, he he had a rough week mm -hmm. last, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So like, is it what like was there any thought process going to like let's play a Tally game of League of Legends, like let's um, counter pick the Jarvan, the the their the top lane? I, I haven't actually even. Uh, thought that t James has been playing poorly. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, our last week's games, we, uh, Claire played the Blanc and translated yep. his pressure really well on onto Tally. Yep. But I think um, we were looking at the game in itself and James has been performing quite well. Um, although now that I'm thinking about it, there was definitely a couple hiccups mm -hmm. that he had in the game. Um, but he's definitely playing a champion. He's incredibly familiar with um, in a matchup that he, ha um, he has priority in. So I'm quietly confident in him this game. Zooming out of the, the particulars and, and the performance of individual players, I want to ask a bit about the mood in, in the order camp because you just snapped what was a really long and frustrating losing streak. And yeah. for a lot of teams, it's very easy to get sucked into that mindset of things aren't working when you just aren't putting up the results. How cathartic was the Direwolves win? Um, it was hard earned. Like, it did, it was actually, um, we could have lost that game easily. Mm. So we feel that, like, this five game, six, whatever it is, like this massive losing streak that we have been on. Um, it was a much, a very much big relief that we were able to win, but we still realize that something is still wrong on mm -hmm. stage. So we've um, had some very big discussions about like the way we're approaching the final few weeks of OPL. And um, I think uh, we've developed a new approach to how we want to tackle these final weeks. Yeah. And um, I think, uh, I hope like that will be shown in this, 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 these mm. two games this weekend. Okay, super interesting. I want to ask you about like the final few weeks. Right, we're tracking into the gauntlet, like, obviously asking like favorites and so that sort of stuff is very easy. Bomber's almost undefeated, they dropped a single game, but like, do you think there's any Dark Claws? Do you think like, like, who do you think is going to make it by the end of the split? Um, I think like, like who's going to make gauntlet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, definitely like Bomber's first seed, mm -hmm. uh, no doubt. Second seed's probably looking at Chiefs. Um, and then a battle for third, probably between Mammoth and AV. Um, <laughs> which I think AV will may be able to hold on to. Yep. And then it's essentially like, we're fighting you guys. Yeah. We're fighting Gravitas for yeah, fifth, okay. for fifth So it comes down to a nothing question of like, you're, you're not going <laughs> to say you're going to lose. Okay, fair enough. I mean, hey, he's I covered his bases, that. right? I think yeah. we'll make it. Yeah. Okay, okay there we'll we go. There's your the sound bite. <laughs> on that note, thank you for joining us, Choo Choo's. Best of luck to the team. No worries. Thank you. Oh, that was a very insightful interview. A lot of... Um, yeah, I like talking about cool him. I mean, he's a, he's a great dude, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, not afraid to be, to be kind of like real about yeah. things that are down, like, while still sounding uh, positive. You know, I think that's important to walk that line as a coach. Yeah, certainly. Like, he doesn't he doesn't avoid the question or give, like, the nothing answer. You know what I mean? Like, he, he'll tell Despite you... Despite you memeing him. Yeah, no, yeah. but, like, if you ask him a question, he'll give you an honest answer. It won't just be like, oh, yeah, no, nah, it's just going to come down to the better team on the day, you know? Like, those... It's, you're like, What's oh, that? sick man. What so that's accent just, was that? That is classic rug... Like, I, I'm like, classic Australian sports interview. Oh, okay, this it's is like, you doing si sports ball. Yeah, no, like, side of the side oh. of the pitch, and you're just like, yeah, like, what do you think of the victory? Yeah, it's a hard force victory, and, uh, yeah, we were just the better team on the day. It's like, yeah, man, sick. Oh, Very yeah, insightful. Thank no, you. No, see, I, see back, in, back in my country, we, we always do a little uh, thing based on... Um, Famous commentator John Madden. Okay. If you're gonna get more points, you're gonna win the game, and that's how he talks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is he good. like Madden, as in like the? Yeah, that's the, that's where it came from. Okay. Yeah. Nice. He also cool. was a really big fan of turducken. Uh, which is a, a turkey you, inside you, a chicken inside a duck. Yeah. How that's, did you know that? I I've seen. Uh, we'll hold that thought. Swiper Who black won't? drags out. Mm -hmm. As yeah. Spooks is just pres pressuring the top side. I only it's I only know what it is because he talks about it on Thanksgiving. Do you know Epic Meal Time? Oh, yeah, Bacon that's strips. where you would have seen Bacon it. Bacon strips. Like, okay. that's, that's the only reason I know yeah. that's a duck. No, that's fair. It is international, truly. Mm -hmm. Cool, into uh, this game. Hmm. We're, um, we're about five minutes Spooks in. Spooks is going to face check here. quiet one. Spooks does check in only. Forced to flash away, followed through by the Lee Sin, and Spooks is bleeding. Yeah, very weird uh, 2v2 here. Spooks does burn the flash, and Chiefs come up with a better trade. Very nice juke there from Claire. He's getting a nice trade back Ooh, onto Swiffer. Yes, he is. Big Ooh, minion wave fighting feet. for him right now, and Claire really dancing with danger right there, but he is able to get out. 
And that is a disastrous trade for the Cassiopeia on multiple fronts. And uh, Dreamforce to flash as well with the exhaust thrown down in the race. All of a sudden, these, yes. like, every lane has this close fight. So I'm going to hit on three things. Top side, Tally was using his abilities on the wave, and Spooks didn't know the Lee Sim was there. So he loses his flash, has to walk away, because Tally cannot fight the 2v2. Swiffer forces the trade onto the Rise in the mid lane. He misses the Q, and this is a cleanse Cassiopeia versus a TP Rise. So he has to take a bad recall. Claire's going to get to push this wave in and set the wave up for himself however he wants. And then the fact that that is the second hook that landed in the bottom lane, because it had to be. Jake did not have Devour available to eat Dream out of the CC. He, could, he couldn't devour him. Like, Dream had to burn Flash. Ignite was ticking, and he has I'll to teleport. TP back to yeah. lane. So... In all three respects, Chiefs, top lane, mid lane, bottom lane, they just get very good trades. So the question is, what do they do with the timings that they now have given themselves by burning all these summoners, by getting the map pressure on? It's very early days in the game, yes. But we do got to look at the map state because you can see some uh, offensive vision being given over yeah. to Chiefs. Meanwhile, Order, they focused it on a more defensive aspect. And I think this, this kind of does speak to what you're talking about a little bit, is that maybe their confidence level is a little bit lower. Now level six is starting to come into play here. Because this matchup is not trending in the direction you normally expect. I will say Swipe is just TP back to late and then lost uh, almost his entire HP bar, but yeah, well. we'll just tick away some corrupting pot stacks, whereas Tally just has the refillable, but Rek'Sai right. is good into Lee Sin. You heard Choo Choo's in the interview, he's like, we kind of picked every single role. Rek'Sai is good into the Lee Sin, like you can poke him around the jungle, you have higher tempo, and then if you ever counter gank any of his, his ganks, like Lee Sin, Q's in and is hard committed to the play. Rek'Sai counter gank, it's a flash knockup. It's he starts the the whirly Q death, and then that feels really good. So the fact that only now has multiple lanes he can attack. Ezreal no flash TP. Uh, Tom Kench has no exhaust. Like Spooks burned his flash in the top trade, and they have set up everywhere. He has all of his options open in a matchup that probably should be much rougher for him. And that's always good when you give yourself a little bit of space, give yourself some options like that. Opens it up. We talked about these two teams being, you know, kind of the epitome of your standard League of Legends, especially from the mid lane. I think that's fairly true for the rest of the map as well. I mean, where where do you really see that kind of like X Factor wild card comparatively? Maybe hmm. in the form of Spooks? Uh, potentially. I feel like maybe in the bottom lane, right? Like Ray's very long time player and Ayla very new, right? But they're already like in a what is a good matchup for Involution and the Thresh into the Ezreal time catch. But as Tom is the best at gracefully losing, they go down maybe a few CS, but you're only seven minutes in. They've burnt their TP. And you got Clef to Mancy, so you're yes. still going to keep up in gold. Yeah, but like they're already significantly far behind, and Chiefs have all the control in the world. That is a very nice, like just now, place ward by Jake, so they will spot the invade, but ultimately there may not be much they can do about it. They're going to have to sack farm on the Ezreal if they are, are to potentially. Contest I love that this visual one. pug, by the way. The blue buff just, just <laughs> sliding. Mm. Yeah. As like, uh, it, like it's a Roomba. Yeah, everybody's hard oh! committing Flash. Only Flash kick onto Jake right now, and they pull nice it back pull. once again. Burned all the way through Dream his health flash. bar. That means first blood picked up by Claire. Oh. Party Portal predicts the wrong way, but <laughs> yeah. they still sticking around. So, uh, yeah, the back end of that fight looks a little bit wonky. Lantern for Vision over the wall. Was not a misclick from Ayla, but Realm Warp does not find the Ezreal, but the contest is still here. Swiffer goes. Ooh, and they oh. hook the blue buff, and it's just a fight over that right now. Claire on the front line. Doesn't really know which direction it wants to go. Spooks might have to smite this one down, and he does, but they pull him back in this time. He's forced to ult away, and Claire takes him down. Buff transfer complete Rice. right now, and Swiffer has been forced to flash Slither off. He's going back in. This is not the best decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, Raze against his ex-mid lane and jungler were... Uh it's hard committing to the fight there. Claire ends up with two kills on the back end. And, and double buffs. Died with the blue buff, right? This was uh, no smite Lee Sin. You can see the cooldown is just now barely coming up, whereas Spooks had his. So he looks at the play. He's like, man, I can just secure this and get out. Unfortunately, cannot get out. Swift loses his flash off the back end, and Jake was just straight up dead. So yeah, look at the state of this the bot lane as well. That wave is just slow pushed. Raze is feeling so good about this. Gets the blue buff yeah, this is the onto his mid laner. Dream. And the wave just meets in the middle. There was no interaction and slow pushes towards him. Oh, this is what you're talking about. I just wanted to get all that farm. You mentioned yep. at the end of the last game, it's just nom, 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 pick it all up. Feels and a uh, big CS good. lead here for Ray's. An interesting rune choice already. He's got press the attack, but you can see in his in inventory, he's got the free ass boots and he has some biscuits. So he hasn't gone for like uh, the blue tree, the sorcery tree, and gone for that scaling damage with the uh, gathering storm or anything like that. But goes for a greedier style, has some biscuits to weather the storm against Ezreal poke and stuff like that. And just getting free value on top of the <laughs> the freeze that like Riot Games League of Legends just gifted to him in a very good position on the Lucian. Yeah, Raze is a happy boy, for sure.
Let's check in with the rest of the map right now. Swiper and Tally are going to trade back and forth just a little bit. Love taps mostly as uh, Tally having a CS advantage. And I think a lot of that was really just, I think, uh, Swiper um, not necessarily just getting the better of it. Mm. Kind of lost my train of thought there, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I He's mean, losing farm. Yeah, they wanted this matchup into the Jarvan, right? Like it's a Jarvan flex, and they immediately show the uh, Lee Sin. So they get to counter pick, they counter pick with the Aatrox, and. Uh, He's just playing it well. 20 CS lead. Almost a strict 1v1. There was like a 2v2 trade on the top side, but like Spooks loses his flash and nobody really lost any farm there. So this is just Tally having a fairly good laning phase. Claire is standing on top of Vision right now, but is just being incredibly annoying, meaning that Swiper gets to catch this for free and Tally has a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Shelly's angry, by the way. Shelly is really mad. She came out of her house and just smacked Claire in the back of the head. Yep. Get off my lawn. Standing on his babies. Yeah. Her babies. Yeah, well, There's yeah. a scuttle crab right yeah. there, and he just stood all over it. Yep. And here and we go. Now he's realm warping in, looking for Swiffer, who oh. has no flash, by the way, has a cleanse. There's the stone. Kick sideways. Swiffer is going oh. to cleanse out of the rune prison, and he narrowly slithers away. Yeah, very narrowly. Dodges the Q from the Lee Sin, so there can't be the insect, just the kick to the side, and Clen gets himself out of rune prison, and he gets to walk away from the back end of that damage, so keeps himself alive, but this is the second time he's been forced back to base. And Definitely uh, some pressure being put out on Swiffer yeah. in the mid lane now. You've got Chiefs starting to finish off this dragon. Should be pretty easy for them, and it's only a cloud, so Order won't really feel a whole lot of urgency to try and contest, even if they were in a position to do so. Yep, Spook's just going to pick up the mid farm while his mid laner is gone and just try and hold it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Air Dragon goes over, so there's absolutely no chance of a contest, nor any desire to, as you mentioned. Raise and Ayla. Back into the bottom lane, still with a pretty significant CS advantage. Had not left lane. Now, Spooks is actually going to be the one to start off because he tunnels Ooh. behind the pit. So this isn't envision. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. no. Actually spotted by Chiefs. And look at this. Thresh already rotating up from bottom lane and only is coming from the bot side jungle as well. Tally Claire has TP. This could be a four man contest. It's already at 4k HP, but burning the back end of the damage on Rift Herald is the hardest part. And they oh, may just out. have to leave. They're out. They're trying to get out. Tally is going to get caught Extra up here TP. by Swiper. And. Chiefs are going to intercept. Nice Prey Seeker steal attempt mm -hmm. from Spooks, but it's going to come to nothing. And Chiefs say thanks for the leash, man. Yeah, doubly punishing. Spooks spends so much of his time actually hitting the Rift Tower on his Chiefs. They just TP up topside. They're like, hey, man, yeah, we'll flip the map. It's a, it's a hard to it's a hard to secure objective. Yep. That feels bad, Spooks. Yeah, it certainly is. It, it just takes so damn long. It Doing does. a dragon, like you bring your friends and it dies in like 20 seconds. But Rift Herald is more often than not soloed because that wasn't Spooks like setting up the map and then doing a Rift Herald with his team. Like he had the float, but he ultimately has to be the one that's sitting there right clicking it. Yeah. And Shelly, unless her eyes open, doesn't take a whole boatload of damage. So it takes a very long time. Chiefs, very good vision control. Spot it out and they rotate over and pick it up for themselves. Yeah, just right games to really subvert those traditional fantasy tropes. You know, normally you hear about. Slaying the dragon is being like the big uh, the big deal, but now nah, it's yeah. easy. It's e it's easy to kill the drakes. Killing Rift the Herald? total. No, no, no. Well, the giant angry void crab. Mm. No, no, that takes forever. Yep. Yeah. Takes even longer than Baron. It feels like sometimes. Yeah, well, different, more, different like, time and level. Different context, right? Like Baron, norm normally you have four friends, so that's true. You uh you have more damage to work. But with. it's also the glowing weak spot in the back, right? You know, like you have to hit in the back. Ooh, hello. Swiper goes all in onto Tally and he floats away. Yeah, but Ryze and Lee Sin are already here. Only has Flash to get behind, but this could just be contest number two onto the blue buff. Swiffer hasn't had a single blue all game. It's going to continue that way. Yeah, Spook's coming in a little bit late. Only does get a bit greedy. Try and take out the Gromp. He might have to blast stone. Oh. He's actually going to have to burn Flash to do it. Yeah. That was a very greedy steal attack. And you know why that sucks? Because it's, he, has, he has the Rift Herald. He would have a Trinket Ward to ward hop to. But oh. Spooks was like, hey man, you want a Rift Herald? Come grab it. And oh, only's wow. like, yeah man. The and he, con. Yeah, he loses <laughs> his flash to the Blast Cone with it. He uh, probably could have ward hopped too. So a little Oops. bit unfortunate. If he gets themselves some uh, turrets, as it is after 14 minutes, so no mm. plates left available. It's worth it in the long run, but a little bit of an interesting situation there. Yeah. So Chiefs, with the out farming that they've been able to secure for themselves, as well as the two kills, still finding themselves with a decent gold lead in this game. It's about a thousand and a half, a little bit more than that. Uh, but no towers fallen just yet after the Australia lanes came into effect. You can see, though, both Raze and Ayla are actually moving towards the mid, and it looks like we Ooh. might be in for big play with yeah. the Rift Herald popped. Chiefs are going to hurt this one in. Oh, Spooks goes for a little bit of a tunnel, gets whacked in the back of the head by Raze. Ezreal is coming, and Tally has TP, but this turret is 
Very close to falling. TP is channeled, so the flank is on. Hook oh, whiffs! A little bit wide here. It looks like that is going to be the signal for the Chiefs to try and get out. Ayla a little bit low here. Claire cannot take the lantern. He's forced to flash. Exhaust still on. And here comes Swiper. The counter collapse is there. Is. Ray's tagging his way forward, but the shutdown tally starts by taking out Claire. Jake going golden, but no health bar left to speak of. Oh. He's out of there. Meanwhile, it's more than enough for Order, though, as they've already taken down Swiper. Looking for only you can see. Spook's just making a whole lot of noise on the player cam and order come up with the fight. And such a nice play. Chiefs, they started off with the Rift Herald, but it is so well read. They get Tally in base. He gets a reset. He gets the flank. Ezreal arrives at just the nice timing. You see that ward just placed in the middle of the lane for no reason? Right on top of the lance. And as you will see, Ayla, he starts this off, looks for a hook, but... He's on 2 HP. Ward on the Lantern. Claire's just sitting there, like, trying to spam click it, but absolutely cannot. They look for the re-engage here, but so much time bought on the back end. Raze wastes all of his damage onto Swiffer, who doesn't die, and Jake, who doesn't die. So the back end of the fight, Dream and Tally left to their own devices. They pick on the rest. They find only off the back end, so red buffs going over to Tally, and just such a nice cleanup there from Order. Yeah, that was great. It really closes the gold gap. Order find themselves actually ahead now, and with the kills, you start to see some items coming in. Tally has a Black Cleaver. The Frozen Fist completed for the Ezreal. Order can play with a bit of swagger here. They still haven't lost their tower, by the way. It yep. was so close, and it's going to go now. So my point is completely negated, but the point is, <laughs> Order did good. Yeah, they held on for as long as possible. We are only 16 minutes into the game, so... Although this has been both teams opting into like a one three one, bottom lanes have been deployed mid and will be trading blows. Yeah, it's Tally's gonna take fairly here. early for this point. Spooks is also kind of rotating down to the bottom side of the map. You can see they have absolutely no vision control, do Chiefs, in their own side jungle. Swipe has got a pink ward in the tri bush, but has to respect that order go missing and does just back away. Yeah, things are starting to get a little out of hand for the Chiefs right now. Order will uh, get this Ocean Dragon sneakily. It's not really one that is huge for the Chiefs to try and contest anyways. Instead, they focus their attention up towards the top side. Yeah. I feel like we used all our Dragon RNG in the first game of the day. Yeah, it completely just went away. Ever like, since, it's We haven't like seen it in Infernal. Dragons, bloody it's, it's Ocean like, it's, Dragons. It's, like that me it's oh. like that gif with the old lady that everyone uses on Twitter. Like, it's been 84 years mm. since we've seen an Infernal. Yep. It's been a while. Unfortunately. Bring them back. Maybe one day. Well, well let, we can, can the observers go on? Uh, oh, no, not yet. No, not yet, because let's, is, uh, let's watch the fight. Got a little bit of a flank oh, here from in trouble. There's a ward hop. Oh, and the void nice. rush on top of the Lee Sin, oh. and he is collapsed on nowhere for him to go. He dodges the tongue, but he yep. gets the claws. And this is Yikes. somewhat of a disaster. Think about how this early game started for Only, right? Like he counter ganks top side and gets Spooks' flash and his 10 C up in the 10 CS up in the jungle matchup. All of a sudden he's sitting 0-2 on the Lee Sin, and that is one of the reasons why Rexai is so good on this patch. Your ulti is undodgeable. And like you cannot be kicked, you cannot be CC yeah. during any of that in animation. So it's like back a Warwick end, that can't Yeah, miss. only is just like, man, they're gonna kick you away and try and live, but times it slightly wrong. Spooks just you know, I, I absolutely do, chops him. I do love the way that they've they've changed the Rex side to really make it so much more relevant, make her so much more relevant, but a little part of me misses the old ult. The farm alarm? Yeah. Absolutely. The dinner not. Bell. You know the worst thing about that farm alarm? Actually, this is simultaneously the best thing because I was on his team, but <laughs> Spooks, okay. So I went from having Carbon as my jungler to uh -huh. having Spooks as my jungler. How did that go? Yes, and no, first of all, Carbon was like, I'm going to split push on Triforce, Rex Triforce Rexai, and I can ulti back to the play on the other side of the map. <laughs> okay. And then when I joined Chiefs, like a year later, Spooks just complained and complained and complained. Like, oh yeah, he always inflated his CS numbers. He was just farming the sideline. I just had to listen to him win. And that's <laughs> like, now as like a an outside, uh. an outside viewer, I think probably split push Rek'Sai from the jungle seems kind of unhealthy, so maybe I like this new one. It kind of makes a little bit more sense. Okay, well that was a point. Um, yeah. I just like it because everyone got to say farm alarm. And yes. it also made a really obnoxious uh, global sound. Can you do a Rek'Sai noise? <laughs> oh no. I How was that? I wish I didn't ask. I, well, I mean, <laughs> you got to give me a grade now. Ah, uh, a solid Ooh. C. Hook goes wow. wide, but uh, hope here you grade is. this one a little bit higher right now. And there's the kick and Swiffer! Has gone golden, but he's got nowhere to go, and he's mm -hmm. taken down by Raze. Yeah. They just stepped on the snake. That's just greedy pathing from Swiffy, you know? They've got the collapse from the rise, they've got the collapse from the mid lane, and Ayla finds a pick, hook goes wide. Doesn't matter that he cops the petrifying gaze into the face, because Flay lands, brings in his teammates, and very easy cleanup. You can see now in the mid lane, like, this is partially the struggle of being a Cassiopeia into a rise comp, as I'm going to hold this thought, Spooks. Spooks. 
does know he's got spotted out right he's now, but some he's here. still looking for the play. Order are playing uh, fairly aggressive despite the fact that they just lost their mid laner. Yeah. And they're playing with a lot of confidence at the moment, considering. Yeah, I think potentially maybe just trying to burn the TP. Like, there's merit to you see Clay split pushing on the other side of the map, and you really don't have an answer right now. So you go bot side, you try and force him to. Like, you play tentatively enough to keep him interested, but you want to back away ultimately. You don't want to fight. But as I was saying, like, look at the CS lead that is now growing for Claire. It's 50 CS, like 40 CS ish. Swiffer now, like, he looks at the blue buff and is like, man, I haven't had one of these in years. So <laughs> yeah. he goes bot side and just leaves the farm underneath the top in a turret to die. Ooh, this dream is uh, fixed away. Ale has been really fantastic on these hooks today. Like, I, I've, I just keep seeing it time and again that he has been always extremely threatening. And, and Thresh is one of those champions that you always Ooh. want to be able to execute well on. Uh, but Ale has consistently been able to do it. Swiffer nearly yep. finding some more damage, but the map kind of resets here. It's such an even game in gold. And this is this is impressive from the order camp. Because this is a team that has been very far down. And, and I think whatever whatever Choo Choo's and the rest of the team had identified that they needed to work on, mm -hmm. I think it was the right thing. Yeah, certainly. Like a lot of their games come down to like these early 15 minute team fights. It's like around a Baron, I think against Chiefs last, uh, sorry, around a Dragon, 15 minutes ish last week, and they lost the fight to Chiefs and they got run over. This time it's like the team fight around the Dragon bot side mid again and they win it, so they're now winning the game. Tally is actually looking for Claire here. Ooh, yes, he is. Tom he does have some help, and Claire does as well. Does not take Ooh. the portal. They do root down the Ezreal into the belly of Jake. He goes, but they keep on moving, and Tally's oh. going to get knocked down. Dream as well. Chiefs turn up the heat, and they take down three members of order. And such fantastic map play from the Chiefs. The TP's double to match the Tom Kenshin. Claire, he just sticks around. Realm Warp, he could have got out to the play, but the very quick decision making. They know the TPs are coming. He doesn't take the Realm Warp. He sticks around. He fights the fight. And that's just three easy picks off the back end of Order making the play. They're going to push two for bottom side, mid side, and break and, open the game. And Claire trusting his teammates, knowing that they can get the counter collapse on. And that should have been a dead giveaway to Order. He does not take the Realm Warp. He sidesteps the damage, and they turn the pressure on to order. It's a tower trade, inner for outer. Looks like they'll get even more as Claire finishes off the last few hit points on the inner tier two. This is all of a sudden flipped right back into Chief's wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Certainly, 3k gold lead just straight off, off the pick. Is Ayla gonna face check? Swift has been doing this multiple times this game. Right, he gets spooked though, and he yep. joins Spooks over on his side of the map. Yep. Still vision control for order over by the Baron pit, but they're not in a position to take the play here. True Shot Barrage coming in a little bit of assistance on the Mountain Dragon. Chiefs will be able to secure it, but Order starting to mobilize a Baron pit. Yeah, but is it a little bit too late, right? Like, this is only and Claire have been doing Dragon for probably about 10 seconds, but they were just fishing for the pick onto Ayla instead of starting up the Baron play. So Claire has TP. They may just be looking to bait this one. I don't think they've actually hit it. They're just come through here. using Rex. can't see if they're doing it just yet. They do try to turn, so it looked like they hadn't been on the Baron. Yeah, no, they were just sitting around the corner. You can kind of tell where they're positioned on the minimap. Ezreal over the wall, Cassio not in range to actually hit that one, and Rek'Sai just sitting as close as possible whilst not being visible, so Order weren't willing to just throw the gauntlet and 50-50 the game, which I like. Cassio scales well, Ezreal yeah. scales well. Like, their comp is not bad. They, they haven't are, lost this game by any means. They don't they need to be more throwing the gauntlet right now. They're a bit more calculated, too. Like, Order are... I never think of Order as a team that, that is going to just take the 50-50 coin flip compared to a lot of other teams in the OPL. I somewhat disagree. Yeah, because in the last so. couple of weeks, like we've seen them do the desperation barons. The desper this, that's desperation's like, different. Hold on a second. Mm, okay. That 50, there's 50-50 when yeah. the game is kind of a toss-up, and there's if we don't do this, we slow lose. I feel like my reasoning is when you're behind a 50-50 baron is a desperation baron. Yeah, but that, that's I will fair. Clarify, Semantics, but that's fair. Yeah, I will clarify in that like order this week already looked different. Last week, as soon as somebody died in a side lane. I feel like they just fell over and died as a team. Like, so, like something goes wrong, Dream dies in the river, and then Swiffer dies in the side lane. Like, Tally's getting attacked, and it just looks like it all falls to pieces. But this is like, they were winning the mid game. Like, they get the team fight, and they have the lead. All of a sudden, they get picked on the bottom side. That was a very nice play by Chiefs. They used the double TP, but Order aren't out of this. They haven't thrown the, the random Baron. They didn't just start it there, because they're like, man, we're losing anyway. We might as well just 50-50 just Baron, right? Like, en like, end it here, or we win the game. Um, but this already looks more calculated than we have seen in the last couple of yeah. weeks. And I think it's the way that Order want to play the game yeah, absolutely. as well. So they still find themselves in about a 3k gold deficit, Ooh. but it's way less significant as, hold up a second, Spooks is zoned out of this. And look at the Ezreal's inventory. That is a potion of skill up, elixir, whatever the hell you call that thing. Oh. That's lucky. Yeah. That feels good. You get some serious RNG that, off, of, yeah. off of that kleptomancy. The loot table on klepto is... 
It's yeah. good, but it's not that good. And this I mean, is that, one of those you, games? You, you get a legendary drop every now and again, yeah. man. That's what happens. Yeah, you just got a just got a body orange. That yeah. feels good. He's a level thirteen, <laughs> level twelve Ezreal. That's nice. Level feels fifteen good, gonna have rank three ulti. Well, that's definitely solid for order. We'll see how they can make use of it. And both teams kind of waiting in vision of their own in the fog of war. Nobody yet to pull the trigger. Order will start to sniff out. They are going to be needing to secure some vision because they do not have eyes on the Baron pit. They do know that Ayla is waiting in that brush and Dream. now they step forward looking for Dream. A little extra damage here. into the belly, he goes. Does not have Bork yet. Did go for the double uh, tier build, so has Seraph. Lifesteal, not his strongest suit right oh, now. Claire geez. may be in trouble. If Claire walks away with that blue buff, it'd be crazy, but they are not going to let it happen that many times in a row. Shut down mm -hmm. by Swiffer, and that is exactly what the Order mid laner needed. And they absolutely needed it right here and now. Dream, no lifesteal, 20% HP, and Chiefs have entire Baron control. If Claire gets out with that one, he can TP towards Baron, and they have effectively a 4v5, where Ezreal is just a useless champ throwing Qs all over the place, but Swiffer... Is definitely not a useless champ. Yeah. Throwing Qs and Es all over the place. Does find a little extra damage there. And, and this is starting to become scary. In my eyes, like, this is why Swiffer has been one of the best mid laners in the OPL, like, over the course of his career. Like, he was never a bad mechanical player. But he didn't just like randomly solo kill you every single game. Like when you think about mid laners in the OPL, like Tommy came in and he's like the 1v1 king, right? Like Ryoma. Swiffer was good because he's very creative. He gets a pick on Declare and he knows Quinny K on Raze is a red, red buff goblin. And he's like, I know you're going to walk for this. And he sits in the bush, like 1v2's Elise Sin, 1v2's the Ezreal as well, and like looks for these cheeky plays. He's down like 70 CS right there here, but like. It looks like Swiffer is playing with like a little bit of swagger back in his step. Oh, you're right. And I think I think this is part of them picking up uh, a win, even if it was a tough one against one of the weaker teams in the league last week in the Dire Wolves. Uh, Order do need a little bit of confidence after losing so many games in a row to see Swiffer back on form is a good thing. Can we can we talk about the terminology Red Buff Goblin though? He's a Red Buff Goblin. Because I love it. He is. He's a bloody Red Buff it's such Goblin. A, it's such a Bryce thing to say. Goblin is such a good term. <laughs> I actually love it. It's so there aren't any goblin characters in League of Legends either. No, I feel well, like we need one. I mean, yeah, sort of. Yeah, well, who? I can agree with that. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think. Do we have... Yeah. I mean, Yordles are kind of goblin-ish. They're just yeah. furry. They're not quite as ugly as a goblin. No, yeah. They're, they're, they're more cute, right? I feel like before we changed the shopkeeper in League of Legends... He was kind of goblin -y. Was he like yeah. a bit of a goblin? I think Hobgoblin, though. Hobgoblins yeah. are the big ones. They're What's... like orcs, right? Okay. Ho like so, I mean, if I know my fantasy trips, hobgoblins are basically just big goblins. So we've decided that hobbits are less ugly goblins, and hobgoblins are less ugly orcs. No, no, no. Ho hobbits stand. are hobbits are small people with hairy feet. No, sorry, I meant um, not hobbits. Goblins. Uh, the League of Legends one. Yordles. Yordles are like yeah. kind of less ugly goblins. Yeah, kind of. I mean, they have like they have like the pointed oh, ears. We'll talk spooks. about the distinction in a little bit because Spooks is getting jumped on by three members of the Chiefs, oh. and Ray's comes up with the kill. And they committed. Swiper on top of Swiffer, and they go for the hook. They go fishing, find a catfish on the line, and they keep on going. Swiffer and still chases has in in the five v four tally. Forced away, he nearly takes down Ayla, but he's gonna have to come back up in the resurrect. Oh. Swiffer trying to get the petrifying gaze off, finds no one. Ray's on a rampage here, and with two kills to none, they set their sights on Baron Nasher. And they've been doing it for five minutes. They're looking for the pick that will break open the game, and Spooks just steps way too far forward, walks into the hands of Ayla, played back and dies for three, and or do they have to fight the four versus five? But this is going to be Baron. No contest. They're looking to trade on the other side of the map, but such a nice play from the Chiefs. And that's the best thing you can do if you're order right now. You know you can't contest the Baron, so try to knock down a tower, get something for your trouble. But the Baron goes the way of Chiefs, and it has been patient, mm -hmm. reaction, League of Legends, and it has netted them the advantage. Yep. Gold lead isn't even that big, but we're just going to take a look at it again. And maybe a little bit of impatience here from Smooth He wants to clear the ward doesn't have enough vision to go for it, and this team fight was slow. They hold the uh, Tami for the Thresh Hook. Ayla gets a very nice flash play and onto the back line, goes for the stopwatch, and it is just straight up front to back. They wait long enough, they have vision with that pink ward into the bush, even though Swiffer lands a couple of man ulti on the back end of that play. Raze just dodges out and cleans up. I love the target prioritization. You could see they had Tally dead to rights, but they turned their attention to Swiffer and said, recognizing the superior threat, knock him down, it opens it up. Now we're at 30 minutes in the game. Chiefs still only holding on to a 3,000 gold lead, but they have the map pressure. They're going to teleport up top, and once again, they're just coming in like a wrecking ball, mm -hmm. trying to knock down towers. Yep, Lucian TP doesn't mean much at this point of the game, and uh, they're going to start breaking the base. You can see Swiper is just walking to the play. Has a teleport of his own, but wants to be close to the boys. 
pushing in that mid lane. I expect they're going to concede this wave, but if they're going to dive, it will be very soon. Not a huge minion wave just yet to work with, so they might wait until the next one before Banshee's they go pop. for the all-in push. You can see Swiper in the mid lane Ooh. contending with Tally. Only! Very he's taken nice. very low, and he's forced to stop and move in a different direction, so Dream can't knock him down with the True Shot Barrage. There is still the Threat of Order. Yep. Far from out of this game. Will smite the camp and do Raptors to try and get himself back much closer to full HP. Dream's getting some very nice poke off the back end of this one. This is yeah, good he defense is. here from Order. Making sure they keep those waves clear. They definitely have a lot of damage to try and stop the Baron empowered minion push, but Chiefs just looking around the side, clearing as much vision as they can, and they forced order inside their own base gates. And I will say, Jake bought some new boots today, but neither AD Carry is opting in for the Adidas. They've uh, just sitting on the magical footwear, the free ass boots here. Oh. Don't need the attack speed, they're just working on the real items, you know? Hey, sometimes discount is the best. You don't always need the name brand to get the job done. Look, it's not even the disc. It's not even brown bags. They got fancy brown bags with like wings yeah. on them and shit. Well, they're like, they're promotional items, really. Yeah. Ah, it's like the yeah. You can't you can't buy those. Limited edition. Exactly. I like that. This could be the wave though. Chiefs are posturing for the dive. They're All actually right. potentially looking for mid lane. Swift is in a one v two right now. Softened up the health bars of order just a little bit, but they weren't able to finish off the tower. Meanwhile, Claire and only going to step in and force Swiffer back. Now Jake is going to come to the rescue cool. once again. Those towers will regen, but very slowly. Yep. Chiefs are playing the game of death by a thousand cuts. Mm -hmm. Certainly are. They're getting chip damage with the cannon creeps on top side. The mid turret is almost dead at this point, and they still have a quarter left on their Baron. This is fancy play, just trying to deny as much vision control as possible. And you can see, like, as we just toggled the vision to water, like, they see absolutely nothing outside of their base. They have a pink ward on the right side of your screen right now, and one in mid lane, but those are very shallow. Like these are, this is Chiefs playing at the top side of the map, completely denying everything in the jungle, yeah. and then setting up hella pink wards to be able to siege with, right? They're Order not allowing no Tally to get a flank. Order yeah. have absolutely no side at this point. They know that that's how Order can win these games, yep. if they can pull off these flank plays. They're willing and able to take fights, but they are running out of options slowly. Mm -hmm. Potentially, right? There is a thousand gold shutdown available on the Lucian, and this is, this is maybe playing on the minds of the Chiefs, and that was a slow play. They didn't, like, dive and inhib onto a good re-engage comp, right? It's a Tom Kench, it's a Casio, Ezreal can kite back. Like, they don't have the best, like, straight-up dive. It really is just the Jarvan, so they're playing the chip game. They don't want to give away, like, a random shutdown, because the gold lead isn't that big, but here we go. They're looking for Swiffer. Yeah, he got caught sleeping here. He does get an ultimate out. But doesn't he's gonna get cut flash. off by the rest of the team. Dodge away from the hook. Nicely played. The play is in though. And do they have the damage to finish the job? They do. Jake cannot swallow him up in they time. Follow. And now the realm warp comes through to get even more damage on into the catfish. They kick him on back and nowhere for him to go as he throws the gray health on. It's not enough. The double kill for Claire. And every time it is just a little pick. Ayla's on fire. And he double gets a two-man play. play into the box and Dream is forced to back away, but Spooks is not so lucky. Chiefs just go one, two, three, and punch out the rest. Of the Order members, Spooks is going to be the last man standing with absolutely no health bar to speak of, and this should be game over. And it's the little pick here, it's the little pick there where they find Spooks, they get a Baron, they find Swiffer, and they break the base. This could just be the end. 15 seconds on the Casio. Here a pick, there a pick, everywhere a pick. It turns out it looks like they can knock down bases as well. Spooks is going to be the last one up for another five seconds, and Chiefs aren't even going to let him have that much time left. This is going to go the way of Chiefs, and welcome to the playoffs. They have locked their spot. If they just hit the damn Nexus. Part. Yeah, they just got to hit the Nexus. They wanted the kills. They got the padding. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And that's Chiefs, it. This, they just showed why they are the second best team in the OPL right now. Because mm -hmm. that was close in the early game, right? Like, Order had a lead for a small portion of that game. But then I feel like, like, multiple members stepping up. It's interesting play. Claire, when he plays this rise, it happened topside versus Gravitas, I think, where he didn't take the realm warp and he just, like, outplays a 1v2, buys enough time for his team. In this game, it was the bottom side play, right? The realm warp is sitting there, doesn't take it. Double TP from Swiper, from Raze there. Old school buddy, buddies on the Chiefs will line up and get themselves back into the game. It's the little picks from Ayla on this stretch. They're finding them time and time again, and yeah. it all just adds up. Well, and it's it just knowing exactly what the reaction was going to be. Like that bit at the end, you could tell. He knew exactly that the Ezreal was going to shift away. He waited to the last couple seconds on the hook. Then he goes in. Mm -hmm. Then he flays. Then he has the land. It's, everything is just so well calculated and so well executed. Yep. And pound for pound, Chiefs are such an incredible team. But they were definitely sweating that game. Give some credit to Order. Yeah, absolutely. Because these guys look like they very well could have put it away. Mm -hmm. Certainly. That, was not by, like, that wasn't a blowout by any means, right? Like, it got later, and, like, a single pick into Baron, then the game gets very hard. But 
I feel like for at least the early portion, there's things going wrong, like here and there on both sides of the map. It was not a blow up by any means. Certainly not. But at the end of the day, Chiefs lock their spot in the gauntlet. So to talk a little bit more about that, let's send it back over to the couch. That's right. Chiefs are through. It looked inevitable that they were going to make it there one way or another, but they locked it in tonight. And like the guys were saying, though, it wasn't always looking like that was the case or to put up a good fight in the first half. Yeah, I think that actually, so like in my opinion, Chiefs won this game at like first blue buff invade, which is like actually like a really classic Chiefs thing to do. If you would throw back to like when Swiper would run big team fight, like Maokai Rumble mm -hmm. kind of champions, he would... Try and get the opponent to base, hold his teleport, and then like fight around first blue buff. Now, obviously, this game that didn't happen, but they still went for the kind of the same thing. They felt they were stronger with zero items. They probably were as soon as you evolution. You're kind of better than everyone with zero items. And they picked up two kills and they both went to rise. And I thought the game was going to be really hard from that for, uh, point forward because they just had such a hard comp to get on top of. That's the thing, right? Like even before the blue buff actually was fought for, there was lane trades. And those mm -hmm. lane trades give small advantages. And this mm -hmm. is the kind of thing that the Chiefs are always going to be commended for in terms of their ability to play macro in League of Legends, yep. right? Like a little lane trade results in a TP advantage, which results in a blue buff, which is actually two kills with the blue buff. And suddenly they have a big lead. But Order did still get the big team fight back, and they did actually start to bring the game back. Yeah, and I guess this is where I think you can kind of try and go with the Chiefs. They do take comp matchups, which has always been my favorite thing about the Chiefs. I've been very like praise heavy about them in the past. In my opinion, you always pick for comp, and then you just weather the laning phase. Uh, but Tally got like 100 CS lead, and he was the only win condition. If Tally one hit raise in this game, the game probably would have been different. You've got to commend them that that never happened, but that was kind of what the time bomb was mm. building towards. And I think that there was a huge problem here for Order, and I want to kind of talk about it because I was critical of Gravitas, and I feel like if I don't do it for Order, like people will flame me for it. But what was Rek'Sai's job in this game? Like, I honestly don't know. Like, you're playing 1-3-1 with a Tom Kench, and, like, Rek'Sai is just shooting prey seekers at people. Like, she's not, like, something that can actually help with the push. Like, she's not a range champion like Talia or something that actually gains your priority mid lane. Yep. She's not a Zac or a Sejuani that can stand, like, big bulky unit, stand between, between you and the enemy team. So, every single time Spooks got caught, he's trying to play that the way he would play Sejuani. You know, yep. eat a hook, dash away, get gobbled up, you know, gain uh, mid lane priority. And the problem with that whole thing is if you have Tom Kench and you don't have mid lane priority... Tom Kench doesn't have an ultimate. And any champion that doesn't have an ultimate sucks. Absolutely. I mean, I actually think that Sejuani would have been a better pick for him at that point. But at least he was useful for checking Barons. The other thing yep. that I would look at for order is they really need to respect when they know where their opponents are mm. to not walk mm. up and die knowing that their opponents are there. Yeah. Like, you have the information, even if it's not on your screen. Yeah. Yep. Respect. But at the same time, like, I think that this was actually a really good game. And this is a, if this is a precursor of, like, Chiefs can play fast. We've seen it. They like team fight really, really well. They can play slow. They let the game come to it. You know, Rays can play well. Swiper can play well. Mm. This game, Claire absolutely popped off, given two kills on Rise and was like an absolute monster. I think he was four levels and 100 CS up at one point, which was nothing that Swiffer did. It was like what the Chiefs did to accelerate their mid laner. Uh, so I just think, you know, across the board, they're showing that they can play multiple styles of League of Legends and going towards Gauntlet, that starts to build confidence. That starts to... I, I can guarantee you what Swiper is saying. He's saying, boys, they've beaten us in best of ones. But if we get the Chiefs on a best of five, we, we got five games. Yeah. Like, we're going to put them to the big Swips grind. Like, yeah. they're going to have to deal with the, all the tanks in the book. Like, they're going to have to deal with the team fights in a best of five. I guarantee you, Brandon Holland is very confident against the Bombers, and I, I can't wait to hear it because if that's in the interview, I want to see if I'm right. Well, let's find out. We are thrown to the desk now with Pyra and Swiper. <laughs> He's all smiles here. All right, but before I lay, I'll give you some time to think up, to cook that answer up in yep. your head. Uh, let's go into this game because Order basically threw every ban at yep. you yep. this entire time, yep. and then you swap it up last minute and go J4. Like, what was your reaction to just getting hard banned out? Um, I think I'm sort of that player that I guess plays all these weird champions and is sort of like, I'm, I, I'm Avant gaming in, like, one role, I guess. Like, I give the yeah. Avant Your chippies vibe. and everyone. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. But, uh, like, these Kled champs, like, you never practice versus them in scrim. So, um, I don't think it's because I'm exceptional at them. I just think it's because no one knows how to verse them. So, it's, like, the element of surprise. Um, and I'm happy to play tanks whenever. So, if you want to throw bands, then that's all right. Fair enough. <laughs> and, yeah, it seemed like uh, you yourself had a pretty solid game. It was a little back and forth mm. in the beginning, though. Mm. Did you expect uh, Order to come at you guys so hard? Uh, I would say Order did quite well with their draft. Um, other than the Rexai, I do agree with Jake on that one. Um, but Aatrox in the Jarvan is a pretty rough matchup. I really just took that for the team comp. I was just like, look, boys, like we got Lucian Thresh. Like, 
I'll do my best, but I'm probably not going to win this lane. It shouldn't have been as bad as it was, but um, I think comp compositioning wise, like it was pretty hard to play against us if you didn't snowball like early hard enough. Yeah, that's totally fair. Now you have a pretty big matchup coming tomorrow. It's mm. going to be Bombers. You mm. have the chance to be the only team to hold a tiebreaker over mm. them. You're already locked in the playoffs. Does does all of this kind of add up to you guys taking it a little more easy, or are you just you just coming for bombers tomorrow? No, nah, we're coming for bombers, man. We okay, want that win. stuff. <laughs> um, it's gonna be really hard, honestly. They've really got a best of ones, and to just elaborate on what Jake said, yeah, like you're not beating me <laughs> best of five in a gauntlet in a gauntlet run. So you're saying tomorrow they might win. No, but when uh, the gauntlet comes, I don't know, man. They they're a really good team. I would I still am just I'm gonna be humbled and real here, and like they are the best team right now. Mm -hmm. Um. It's a matter of, like, who shows up on the day. Like, we can take it. They can take it. I think it's uh, probably going to be a coin flip victory tomorrow. Like, I'm go I'm confident, but in saying that, like, you need to be ready for defeat sometimes as well. And they are an exceptional team. So, we're, we're looking towards the gauntlet more than anything. But we're hungry. We're hungry okay, still. Looking forward to see what happens tomorrow. It's going to be an absolute banger. Now, to close out the day, let's send it back to the couch. Thank you very much. He is hungry for League of Legends. He wants to play another four games right now. You can just feel just put it. Put him He's in pumped. best of fives, man. Just put him in there. Put him in. Can't beat him. Now... Speaking of unbeatable, we've had Bryce's comment. We've had Jake's comment. Potentially unbeatable. Potentially unbeatable. Potentially. Very good one. Did you use perspective? I didn't use any perspective. No, no perspective. Just flat on 2D. Uh, Rusty, what have you got for us? So, I didn't know what to draw. I had no inspiration. I was like, let's just, like, I Googled League of Legends champions to see what I could come up with. And I was nice. like, I could do Bard, but it's already on my body. Why would I redraw something that's, like, done better than I could do Please. on my body, right? So, I picked Draven. I thought Draven would just be a good champion to just to just do. I feel like he's stalling. Yeah. And where's the Draven? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> that's very that's very good. That's quite good. Yeah, <laughs> no, I like it's that. Not. <laughs> Look, it's quite good for how long no, I know you that's spent. That's stylized. That's you know what that looks like? Like the, the facial structure? It's like the way that they uh, drew Hades and Hercules. I was gonna say Hercules if the movie. crimson oh, chin yeah. like yeah. animorphed into a potato. <laughs> that, too. that takes a little bit more words to say, but I, I think you've got very artistic ability, Rusty. So this is like a one-shot comic about his character? Basically, I figured there was no point doing a storyline for a Draven image, because yep. Draven's story will just be like Draven, like a day in the life of Draven. Good. That's literally what he would want. Do you know, like, have you read Name of the Ruined? I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, you've read Name yeah. of the Ruined. You know how, like, one of the things about Quoth is, like, he just says he's the best at everything, and he's the most handsome, and even, like, magical creatures adore him. Totally. And, like, that's kind of what Draven's comic book I, I thought you were going like. to say that's what Rusty is. But no, yeah. I was going to say, like, that's kind of, like, if Draven was going to tell Draven's story, it's just... how it would just be how good Draven is. And I like the fact that, like, much like Thor or, like, you know, Iron Man, mm. it's just called Draven. It's a very yeah. simple title. Yeah, yeah, No, I like it too. I think it's a pretty stellar job. Okay. I think it's better than Bryce's. Uh, oh, you know, we could put ours together and make a really good Wait, image. Do you have something? I mean, I started drawing Nick Boy's head. Oh, I got the hair. Pretty so, close. <laughs> but I had like five minutes to do this because yeah, okay. I just was in the midst of game prep. So well, yeah. how about it was going to be a story about you? Yeah, and how you open and how you prep for the day. I imagine you're like yelling in the mirror, like "Well, I'm gonna day one and like and stuff like that." You can you can make it for tomorrow, and you can show us tomorrow. I can't. Well, I'm I'm gonna leave this here, yep. and then before show, I will keep drawing it. Beautiful. Yeah. And Bryce, did you want to add something about your comic? Uh, there's no way Zach's is better at all. Do <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we should have a vote. Well, I feel like your title is good. he's put he's your put title a, is really good. He's put he's done a sort of like an image, like a like a picture. I want Yours is a I want to make something clear, Bryce. Uh, I at least attempted eyes. I didn't avoid the eyes of a drawing. Though I would say the kneecaps are the eyes of the leg. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. Okay, Could someone I'll... quote that and put it in like the one of those like are the eye of the leg. One of those like like grayscale like motivational pictures with a quote. The kneecaps are the eye of the leg. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What'd right. you do, Nick? Um, okay, I've got mine. A reminder that this is a competition that you can enter. Send in your submissions You're not of, your, win. Why bother? of your comic book drawings. The best one that we will pick on tomorrow's broadcast is going to take on the Cloud Alpha, Cloud Alpha Hyper X gaming headset. Send them in to at OPL on Twitter using the hashtag I'm OPL. My comic is a comic about my favorite people in the world, <laughs> and that is these boys, the Lime Boys. So, this is one of those <laughs> untraditional <laughs> horizontal drawings. Uh, so if I, maybe you could hold it up cause you've got really? a closer camera. Uh, so we've got in the middle there, smoke em daddy. So that to me, <laughs> I'm the leader and I'm very excited that I'm going to pee on a grate. So I'm standing on the grate. Yep. So I'm very excited about that. Is that a chicken roll, roll with a lot Bryce, of Bryce's arms. power, so my power is I know how to stand on a grate when I pee. <laughs> Bryce's power is he's the human chicken roll who could wrap you up with I his big gangly arms for a hug until he crushes you. Um, Rusty. 
uh, is wearing the shirt that he's wearing right now, but his face is so beautiful that all you see is blinding light. <laughs> and, and, a a and you can't figure out anything. There's a pyro. And behind Rusty is Pyro <laughs> just poking out. Uh, from the corner. Isn't that a bit derivative? Oh it is a little. God. But I figured that while everyone is blinded by Rusty, you sh- you run up and bite him on the ankles. Uh, and then finally, yeah, uh, in over here, we've got Jake. And Jake is one of those people, when you drive no, past I mean, on the road, they're spinning a sign like it's Christmas time and they're selling trees, but his sign just says Melbourne. Uh, and so you're just spinning the Melbourne sign. What, that, is, what is going on inside that head of yours? I don't I know. And I called us the know. Lime Boys. Of course, we were the Lemon Boys, but mm. I was thinking the word Lime when I wrote it, so I accidentally wrote Lime. <laughs> and isn't that how all good superhero <laughs> names are actually created? Great. Uh, so That's there you great. go. The name oh. chooses you. It does. I was so ins- you it, thought we were the Lemon Boys, but really... We were always the line. We were boys. we were always the line boys deep down. So if you can beat those drawings, please send them in. Please Hashtag do beat I'm them. I'm OPL at OPL. You can win yourself a gaming headset. Runners up will get hex tech chests and keys, and losers will get kiwi fruits. <laughs> Speaking of kiwi fruits, I believe there was a pretty big loser today. Oh yes, there was. And that was Mr. Nick Boy. Can we get out the spicy tips, oh, please, you. sir? What you, yeah, I reckon. I reckon I equaled you. Do you think so? No. Oh, no, one off. Oh, nope. one off. Oh, yes. yeah, that was a... Uh, I was, was so uh, keen. You it, was such a, it was such a good start to the day. You know what? I'm a nice guy. I'm going to go out in solidarity. And he oh. just wants to eat a kiwi fruit. Now, my producer is, of course, pointing to the kiwi fruit that the dog was licking. Hey, 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 hey. So You've just taken a sticker off. I need to leave the sticker Yeah, you need to leave okay. the bloody sticker uh, on. I was I also reach. informed by no. the chat that yeah. kiwi fruit, if eaten by dogs, uh, does have a laxative effect. So I think <laughs> the joke is on the producer. So we need to close out. Cheers with the results from today. And I reckon I'm just going to smash as many kiwi fruits as I can because they're just delicious. For those of you that don't have it with the skin, you're missing out. You're missing out. The skin and the sticker. The sticker's the best (laughs) bit. Results from today, please. (laughs) Gravitas taking the win over Avant Gaming. Bombers! Facing off against Legacy and ruining my day by taking home the win. And they're working themselves in to Gauntlet. Mammoth versus Diewolves. Mammoth take home the W there and Chiefs versus Order. Chiefs Winning and Swiper, I believe, walked straight back into the studio and started playing another game. Uh, standings? Are we doing stand? No. D- tomorrow's is a- tomorrow's schedule. Go. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> He's so ripping. Stop that. That's just <laughs> disgusting. Mammoth oh, play no. AB, order play Legacy Bowls. Wait, Chiefs, Grammar does die of Nick can't speak. On behalf Which of myself, <laughs> Nick Boy. Oh, he ate the sticker. <laughs> oh, go back to yeah. the camera, please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Oh, stop And this. the oh. entire crew here at the OPL, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you tomorrow at 4. <laughs> Make it stop. Just, oh, oh it's so... What is oh. happening? Oh, oh no, the camera! No. It's getting Cut worse. the cameras! Oh. oh, I'm so glad he doesn't have a solo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can hear it! It's really gross. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh.